You're listening to the OCD Stories podcast, hosted by me, Stuart Ralph. The OCD Stories is a podcast dedicated to raising awareness and understanding around obsessive compulsive symptoms. I do this through interviewing inspired therapists, psychologists, and people who have experienced OCD. Welcome to the OCD Stories. So welcome to episode 284, and in this one I interviewed Gen Skea. Gen comes to us from Albania, and in this episode he shares his story, sexual intrusive thoughts, sexual orientation OCD, moving abroad to avoid the thoughts, finding out about OCD, learning and reading about OCD, interviewing therapists to find a good match for him, we talk about panic attacks, the process of therapy, and much, much more. And thanks to NoCD for supporting the show. NoCD are dedicated to creating a better everyday life for people with OCD. They now operate in the US, UK, and Australia. To find out more, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories, or click the link in the episode description. And of course, thank you to you guys for listening. I deeply appreciate it. And thank you to Gen for his time and his story. And without further ado, here he is. Welcome to the show again. Yeah, great to have you here, Stu. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Um, as you know, it'd be great to hear your OCD story. So um, as little or as much detail, it'd be good to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I've had OCD as far as I can remember, as long as I can remember. But uh, like three years ago, four years ago, I had like this massive uh, wheel of images repeating itself. I don't know. I don't know if you saw the the series of Pure O yeah. by Road, yeah? yeah. I think that's how more or less started for me. But okay. it, at the movie, I think it looked a little bit funny, but it wasn't. So <laughs> I think it was very disturbing for me, at least. And uh, I spent the whole night, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't put the name on it. I, and I just sat on the couch and waited i don't know for the sun to rise and yeah the whole thing be over but it didn't so i i just uh, tried to sleep again in the morning but i had like a very intense period during this time for like two or three weeks mm. of high anxiety and like uh, disturbing images of uh, sexual images just in general not like because my main theme is a sexual orientation OCD, but at the time I had just like really everything sexual at any point. Just anything could be turned into a sexual object or image. Mm. And yeah, but at the time I, I just uh, I graduated. It was around September, October, and uh, you know I I just had a I broke up with my girlfriend and at the time I was just feeling like in the middle of nowhere. So probably that was like a really great soil for OCD to, <laughs> to grow. And yeah, uh, but it wasn't, uh, even if it was like really intense, it didn't last long for that period. I think like about a month, but it was like really, really intense. And I just, I, I couldn't go out. I just stayed at home, you know. I didn't want to go out and make something crazy or make something that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And, you know, later on, I, after a couple of months, I moved out of my country. I uh, went to live. And, you know, it, uh, it was a new experience and probably that helped a little bit, just, you know, going away a little while. And I had I had a good time. I was just uh, learning new things, you know, uh, meeting new people, and it was something that I think at the time helped. I just called it anxiety at the time, so I think it was some. It wasn't that much of a problem, but uh, you know, uh, here in Albania, at least, we don't get that much of exposure in terms of. Uh, you know, LGBTQ, you know, yeah. uh, themes or people, community. So it's not something that it's really integrated in everyday life. So here it's just like uh, something of 
outside, you know, coming from yeah. outside. So uh, that's how it was uh, at the time. And uh, but when I was living in Malta, and uh, you know, really good place and really a really good place to be exposed to. To, to this community and it was great you know I, I met a lot of people and I I just you know I I had a good time in terms of uh, social interaction and just meeting people in general and then after a while I don't know I, I started to have just like uh, that feeling of disturbance in general I, I felt like I was slowly getting back to that place, you know, in terms of anxiety, just, and the only thing I could think, I mean, uh, I tried, you know, when I moved from Albania to Malta, I think that worked. So I think, yeah, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to move from, <laughs> from Malta to somewhere else and probably that will help also. So I, I went to Netherlands in Amsterdam. So I think that's what would spike my anxiety like really, really high. Because, you know, have you ever been? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's constant exposure, like every, everywhere you turn around. And uh, yeah, and at that time, I was working and living in a hostel. And uh, it was a really nice experience for me. And like I said, there it's, uh, you meet, I mean, every kind of people. I, there, I, I assure you that <laughs> you can see and meet any kind of people. And uh, yeah, it was a great experience in terms of uh, life experiences, but in terms of uh, anxiety or later what I would call OCD. And that's when I really uh, had my first thoughts like something is wrong, like really something is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like something is not aligning with my, my values and my identity here. It's like I was getting like uh, images of me having sex with someone else, with, with a man, you know. I was getting uh, a lot of images and, you know, of course, you get the thought, like, is this really me? I'm going to do something. I mean, I'm here, so probably that's why I'm here. You know, you start to <laughs> have this kind of uh, magical thinking. And, yeah. and But at that time, it was the first time I heard OCD uh, as a term and as a problem. Because I heard before OCD and I thought it's just something like, you know, you like to be clean and organized. And... That was it. But I was playing uh, pool with a guy and uh, he kept moving the, I don't know how it's called, the the chalk, you know? The, oh, yeah, the chalk. Yeah, yeah, the chalk, yeah. And he kept moving it. And I had, like, I was disturbed so much by it. Hmm. Every time he moved it. And I, I put it at the same place every time. I had, like, a specific place I had to put it. He noticed it and he kept <laughs> putting it back, you know, every time. And I, I kept getting nervous and I said, just don't move it. And he said, it was the first time I ever heard. And he said, look, man, I think you might have OCD. I don't know, but like you have to check it. It's, and it's a really bad thing to have it. <laughs> and I don't know. I was just, I was shocked at the beginning just by the term of it, but I didn't think much. And I kept, you know, I, I was really busy at, at my work and at the life I was living. It was like a, a party hostel, I might say. So guests kept coming and, you know, just having a good time, like 24 hours. It was just, I, I didn't get much sleep. I was just staying at the, I was staying awake every night so I could, you know, party, and then uh, I would sleep in the morning. Next day, I would go out in parks and just sleep there just for some quiet time, <laughs> just to get away from it. And, uh, but every time I, you know, I, I got out and I, I 
I would see the life there and my mind kept saying that, uh, you know, there's a reason for you to be here, you know, you like, uh, you know, here's a big LGBTQ community. So I, so that's why you're here, you know, and yeah, it, it was disturbing, but not that much. I, I kept pushing it, you know. Of course, I started, not that I started drinking, I was drinking at the time also. So, yeah, and at the beginning, it might work, you know, you, you just feel the buzz and uh, you have a good time. But then, you know, uh, the, as they say, you know, the highs get high and the lows get like really, really low. So <laughs> I, I was feeling that the lows, like there was some really low moments that I never felt before. Mm. And that's how my experience there pretty much finished. And I got back in Malta. In Malta, I had like a sort of community, I might say just friends in general, not anything to do with uh, LGBTQ or uh, I don't know, just Mm. I had a group of friends that we were out like, every night basically just compulsively trying to you know to meet girls so it became like a really huge compulsion i think it might have to do also with osedina that i think about it you know like uh, if you don't date enough girls you know you might be gay so yeah pretty much and At the beginning, you know, you you like the idea of uh, being liked by others, but then, you know, you find yourself like trapped that you can't get out. Mm. And, you know, I, I just thought again, you know, this is not me. This is not something I did and that's not something I enjoyed, but this is something that I, I have to do. I have to prove something. But maybe, you know, uh, I have to try more so I can prove it one, one last time. You know, I, I, I'll get the final answer. And, but it was getting so, I, I might say dangerous because I, I, I didn't sleep enough just by going out like every night and I didn't sleep enough. And probably that, gave me like a a lot of health problems i might say also but yeah. of course um, also some paranoia i might say so i was just constantly looking for dangers what mm-hmm. might happen you know maybe i can do something i can hurt some people just i can turn into like a violent homeless uh, or maybe just someone might try to to rape me or I don't know. And, but I I just felt, you know, I, it was the time that I I was feeling uh, tired of this. And I, I just said to my brother, just buy me a ticket and I'll just come back home. You know, I, I just want to go home and just start from zero. And it was uh, at that time, I just got back home like in a couple of days and the probably had to do, because I was sitting at the same couch that I had my first intrusive thoughts and images and that's when it like started again. And and of course it didn't stop. And I said, you know, I, I, I have to do something about it. I have to find someone to help me because, you know, I tried everything I mm. could but they didn't help. So I might find someone to help me. And of course I just typed a therapist, you know, and I just went there and I said, you know, I need help, but I didn't say, of course, (laughs) what the issue was. So I just said, you know, I need help. I'm just struggling with life in general. And she was, you know, a thought therapist and, and she did much of the talk, 
well, I'm of the talking, so <laughs> I think she had a good time. Yeah. yeah and but uh, that at the time I, I I decided, you know, I have to to search for these thoughts, what they really mean. Like, okay, if they mean something about me, I'm just finding. I'm gonna find out. And I just type, you know, I, I think I type uh, sexuality doubts. Yeah. And the first article was from, I think, OCD LA. And that's where I found OCD. It was mm. H OCD there. Yeah. And I I just put it down, everything down. I was just relieved, you know, that, that mm. relief when you find that you have OCD and that lasts for a couple of days, of course. <laughs> and I started to read about it. I downloaded some books. Uh, there were some books that were really, really helpful. I don't know if I may mention them here. Yeah, uh, okay for it. Yeah, sure. I, Dr. Jonathan Grayson's book. I like that one, but the, the, one that I really liked was uh, from Sally Winston. Yep. Yeah, that one. I think it Intrusive had, thoughts uh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because it had some, also some act principles there, but at the time I didn't know anything about act also. Mm. So, but uh, it made so much sense for me personally. It made yeah. so much more sense that book. And uh, I. I went to my therapist that I was seeing and I said, you know, I think I might have OCD and uh, I don't know what you think about it, but I I read this book and I think I'm a good match for, the, mm. for OCD. And she said, you know, I don't think so. She said, you don't, you do wash your hands regularly. <laughs> and I said, I don't know, like, like normally, not regularly, but normally. Mm. And then she said, you know, we, we are, everyone is a little bit OCD. And that's, you know, it was something that I said, okay, it's time to find a new therapist. <laughs> yeah. But it was difficult because here you can't find like an OCD specialist. And so I was just typing everything like uh, OCD, Albanian, uh, any keyword just and add Albanian <laughs> and uh, I found uh, I found some like two three uh, just I looked through their through the CV and I uh, saw that they were specialized in CBT so I thought they might be a good help mm. and I just talked on the phone with them and uh, I promised to see them, but I didn't go. <laughs> I was not sure yet. Uh, at the time, I started to follow on Instagram some some of the OCD coaches that you might know, you know, and mm. uh, I was ready for it. And I said, okay, I'm just, uh, I wasn't working. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to find a job just to afford that kind of uh, therapy. Yeah. So I... Uh, I, I tried, you know, but I, I was uh, compulsively just uh, watching some of their uh, live videos on Instagram just to find an answer and waiting for me to be ready mm -hmm. to start therapy. And uh, when I was uh, reading more and more about the treatment i said okay this is something that maybe i can try it on my own at first you know erp mm. this is something i can do just expose yourself to your fear and that in 10 days you'll be fine and i i was looking in youtube i, I searched for you know coming out videos and at the new uh, a new tab you know i mm. <laughs> I just type, you know, a conversion therapy. So just in case, <laughs> so, you know, it's, this is yeah. like really stupid. But at the time, my, my mind thought, okay, if, you know, if you were to be gay at the end of the 
therapy, you know, you can just try this one, this method, you know, to go back. So it's just pure nonsense. But that was uh, at the time, that was like uh, my first experience with panic attack. Mm -hmm. It was a really big exposure for for the time and uh, I just I felt everything was uh, crashing down and this is true I mm. you know what I'm going to do with my life uh, you know just raising thoughts yeah and that was it I just surrendered uh, this is this is something that I can do anything about it maybe I don't know this is my fate <laughs> and the next morning you know i just everything felt you know i don't know if you experienced panic attack and like the next day you feel that the rush of euphoria i don't know if you had it for me i've, I've had a panic attack but i haven't experienced that uh, for me it's like this like every time i have a panic attack like next day probably i'll have like this kind of excitement or yeah. you know like i felt back to straight again you know <laughs> yeah like you just kind of released all of the anxiety yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so but for me it feels like a rush of euphoria uh, mm. it's this is something that uh, i was thinking about it you know you get addicted to this feeling also like you do the compulsions just to feel that sense of relief like it feels so good yeah but okay so that was it i said i really need to start therapy with a specialist now so i i had some contacts so i just called them and uh, i made some appointments and i went to see them i i saw like four or five therapists at the same time just me screening for the right therapist and i saw some therapies that I had a good understanding and uh, of OCD, but you know, I, I was like really hesitant to talk to them about my thoughts at the beginning. But I was more hesitant about their expertise in OCD. Mm -hmm. So I kept asking them, like, "Have you ever worked with OCD patients before? Like, how do you treat OCD and stuff?" And some felt like uh, you know they were. I don't know, too good to be true, you know, like, yeah, this is something we we work on every day, you'll be fine in just a couple of months, you know. I don't know, it felt really good, but <laughs> it didn't feel normal for me. It didn't feel like something that it felt so easy the way they, they said it. And I got another contact from from a therapist I was talking to. And uh, the first time I spoke on the phone with him, he was like, he had the really, really good understanding of OCD. And it was the first time I thought, okay, this is someone who really understands. It. And I'm, I would be willing to see him. But he was on a leave uh, and at the time and he referred to me to another therapist that was my therapist at the end. and. But <laughs> the thing was with this therapist that I was talking to, and he was working with the uh, LGBTQ community shelter here in, in Albania. Mm -hmm. So I was really afraid to, to see him. <laughs> so I just thought, okay, thank God that he's on vacation and I'm not going to see him. <laughs> and, you know, and he, he gave me this new contact, my therapist that I was not so much excited to see at the beginning because I thought okay this is the right one so I was really excited to see this therapist but okay I'm gonna give it a try and you know we just talked just about OCD in general I was making all the questions at the beginning so I was like really wanted to know how much she knew about OCD, how much she knew about treatment. This is something that I'm going, of course, 
at the beginning I was willing to work on this. I don't know for two, three years. I don't know how long it took. I'm just willing to start therapy and but I just want someone who is also willing to work with me. And we just hit it off. Uh, at the beginning, I remember like the first exposure was for me just to write the word gay. I, I couldn't say the word gay, so I just found some uh, some intellectual words, you know, just to... <laughs> how to express my thoughts, you know, uh, mm. you know, I have thought that my uh, sexual orientation is change is changing, you know, and she was uh, trying to make me say the word gay every time. And she said, I don't understand, like, what are you trying to say <laughs> every time? And, and I said, you know, there's, you know, the other one, I, I just mm. try to put it this way. And I just took a paper and wrote it. I couldn't say it. That's how I showed it to her. And okay, so it was time for me to start with the exposure. And I, the first time I said the word gay, I just cried. I couldn't, you know, it was like a really, I thought I could... You know, I, I could say my, my thoughts without uh, provoking me so much anxiety. But the first time I, I just said the word, I just, I started crying. Mm. It was so much of, I had kept it, these thoughts for so long without telling anyone. So it was about three years until I started treatment. Yeah. So it was a really long time. And yeah, but that was a really good start because now I I found someone I could trust and I was willing to work with her. And it turned out really great in, in the end. I really enjoyed going to therapy. I mm. had a great time. And yeah, I finished therapy in about eight months. Uh, and of course there are so many things during the therapy that happened of course but I didn't have setbacks I can say this and it was like a really smooth transition from every exposure I did hmm. except I might say just one time uh, it was Christmas so, you know, we, we took a week off during this time. So we would start after two weeks. And uh, in my mind, you know, I, I just, I found this uh, safe place where I can work mm. and treat OCD. But at the time it was like, it was just a week. But in my mind, I, I felt abandoned. So I thought, okay, I'm here on my own. So I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. And I was, uh, my exposure at the time was watching uh, gay theme movies, but <laughs> like uh, the kind of movies that are really graphic in nature. So like really sexually graphic. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the first time I, I had the, dreams and uh, like sexual responses to these dreams mm. so it was like really hard that was i think the most uh, the hardest time uh, in therapy for me yeah. because i it was not something i planned on it to 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 have this kind of exposure but you know in dreams yeah you get anything and you feel everything. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, and I was thinking, you know, this is not working. I had some doubts about therapy at that time. And, but I said, okay, I just want to 
finish what I started. So in the end, everything turned out great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's, it's a good point you make because I think we can become dependent on our therapists and in, in a way that becomes like a compulsion in itself Yeah, because your therapist needed time off because it was Christmas um, and she needed to rest. She had to kind of quote unquote abandon you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then that opened it up and brought all that anxiety in. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the thing uh, was that uh, just a month later she got COVID. So <laughs> she had a really, yeah. And I got COVID also. So it was like a month of uh, me on my own. But this time I said, okay, this is something I have to deal with. And it's a good time for me to to try it on my own. How can I deal with OCD without the help? Not without the help, but with the help of the tools I learned so far. Yeah. So that's the best way to put. It. Yeah. And I think I did a good job. I, I was like really, really proud, you know, <laughs> because you know I was really scared. Yeah. It was a yeah. It was a long time to be doing therapy mm. on your own. Yeah. And but it worked. I think it worked. And I, I did the job. So <laughs> when I got back, you know, and she, we saw that we were on a good way to maybe think about when to when to stop uh, going to therapy. Yeah, uh, I told you before. I don't know if you remember, but I told you. You know, I started having uh, thoughts like how it's going to be for me, you know, uh, I'm going to miss therapy. I'm going to miss my therapist. So pretty much for me, this sounded like I'm in a good spot right now. So mm. I think I can do well. And, you know, I, I finished therapy in, uh, in April and just starting to think about just, real life problems now yeah I, I i have so much free time from mm. from my compulsions and from my thoughts so yeah I, and i enjoy it that's how i can put it yeah i Amazing. really enjoy it yeah so you, you got time to worry about other things now <laughs> i got time to worry about the real things now mm. <laughs> that's True. that's the best way yeah yeah well look, thank you so much for sharing your story and being yeah, so o- open with it yeah and you said your brother you asked your brother to book you a flight back to albania yeah. so did your brother know what was going on for you no okay no. Mm, i can say no one knows from my family what's going on yeah. you know uh, yeah. i told your friend you know uh, it was some sort of exposure but uh, it was something i really wanted to share with someone and yeah. i told a friend and you know he of course he he was like really open about it and he asked like some normal questions you know that anyone would without yeah. knowing about ocd but uh, you know we talked about it before but i don't in family it's something different I would like to share it, but I think I would like to share it when they would be in a good way to understand it. Yeah, that's how I can say. It. Yeah, I don't think they they are ready with the information about OCD or any other mental illness or anxiety in general. So, yeah, fair enough um and what what was it like then kind of seeking treatment trying to find a therapist and reading all about ocd initially without like anyone knowing uh, reading about it was uh, sorry is know. in yeah is in um 
you know, because you, you, all of this is going on in your head and it's been terrifying for like a few years yeah, and, yeah. and now you've decided to get help. Um, I guess what, what was that process like? Because you didn't have like, it's not like your family knew or your friends knew, you were kind of alone in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but reading books, I didn't feel that much alone, but uh, okay. yeah. trying to find a therapist probably, yeah, you mm. know, because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure that they knew about OCD at all. So yeah. I didn't think that OCD exists anywhere here yeah. or specifically with this theme. So that's something else. And but I started watching YouTube videos, and of course, you. I found some advocates there, and uh, mm. that's when I uh, found out about OCD stories. So that really helped. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Um, and, yeah. You know when you, it's something different when you read about it, but it's. Yeah. You feel so much connected to others when they share their, sto their story mm. and mm. they're like real people, not, I can say, I don't know, but here, you know, being, I, I see it, I saw it uh, even somewhere else, but, you know, uh, people try to learn about these uh, conditions through celebrities, you know, mm. but I, uh, I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's not really accurate. Um, so I think you you get so much insight from everyday people, you know, through their story. So I got a lot of information, and uh, I I felt like I was uh, I was not alone, and I felt I belonged somewhere. So that's how I felt just uh, listening to to your podcast and to every guest. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, that that moment people find their community however they find it is is a big one. Um and I like that you kind of you lined up for was it four therapists and you you yes, kind yes. of interviewed them. Yeah. yeah. Um I think that was a really good idea because that way you can, you can find the best fit and, and if they know what they're talking about, I guess it also depends if they charge for that first hour or some yeah, therapists give actually, a free hour, don't they? I actually, I, they charge, but uh, I think it was an investment from my part. Okay, so yeah, fair enough. I know I'm just paying to get the right therapy, so I don't yeah. care that much. Yeah, yeah smart. Um, and I think you you've told me before that you you use the ISDF. So the ISDF had like questions to ask a therapist. Did you say you used? Yes, that? yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's another good one. I'll link to anyone listening in the show yeah, notes yeah, so yeah. they can find that. Um, yeah okay cool but it, it worked you know you did find a therapist that was able to help um so alongside therapy was there anything else you did oh okay alongside reading and therapy is there anything else you did that helped i i don't know i think just me trying to keep up a a steady job, I think that's something that mm. helped because I couldn't keep a job normally. I mm. it wouldn't last longer than a month. Mm. So I think that helped a lot. Just trying to work at the same time and mm. you know uh, having OCD and going to therapy, this was like a big thing for me. And that was the thing that helped me, you know, mm. first to pay therapy and uh, also just you know just keeping myself busy and yeah. doing the things that I normally have to do and want to do so that's something that uh, you know takes some time off of my intrusive thoughts or my yeah. compulsions not just <laughs> not intrusive thoughts but basically compulsions because I was just I work from home, so it's really easy to just Google and yeah. check or listen to 
different stories, like compulsively listening to. And so it's it was really hard for me not to do that. Just working and not doing the compulsions because it was so, so easy. I had the, you know, just in case I would keep the books I was reading, I would keep a uh, bookmark. That's how you say, you know, yeah, bookmark. bookmark yeah. yeah. At the theme, at my, at my theme, you know, just in mm. case I would go <laughs> read it. Yeah. Read it and reassure yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause yeah, you, you had to keep the job to keep paying for therapy. Yeah. yeah. So in a way it helped you stay with the job because you needed it for therapy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. Um, so was there any kind of moment where you read something or your therapist said something, or maybe you heard it on a, the podcast that like it just made you understand OCD in a particular way or treatment for OCD or, or your theme or anything like that? Any any kind of like light bulb moments? Yes, but it was a funny one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go for it. So uh like I told you, the therapist that was working with LGBT community, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, she said she was asking me like how I. It was at the beginning. She asked me how I found found out about her, mm-hmm. and I told her uh, someone referred me to you, and uh, I I told about the therapist that ref- uh, referred me to her, and uh, she was trying to say that you know it would be better for you to work with him because it would trigger you much more and expose you to this theme much more Mm -hmm. but as as she was talking you know i interrupted her and i said you know uh about the guy and i said you know he's gay right and uh, she was just surprised and she said how do you know you know she I, I when I spoke with him, you know, as therapists are, they are really compassion, mm. compassionate, and and they're really kind with their words. So, for me, in my mind, I, I felt that that you know, that's so gay. That's mm. <laughs> and in my mind, I was said, you know, he's gay, and she told me, you know, I'm not supposed to say this to you. I don't share so much and I, you know as therapists they mm. don't share their private life but she said it's a really good moment for you to understand those OCD right now because I'm not reassuring you anymore but she said you know he's my husband and we have two kids together <laughs> oh man <laughs> I just we had a, a good laugh and you know that, that was something that helped me i i mm. might say but <laughs> when i think about it i laugh every time but mm. yeah that's that was a really funny one so was that that moment made you realize that you were so convinced that this yeah, therapist yeah. was gay and in fact you were completely wrong yeah, yeah but it it was at the beginning so i think that yeah. was what helped because you know if uh, it happened Later uh, on the treatment, that it wouldn't have that much of effect, I would say. But mm. you know, just to start uh, exposures with uh, some kind of humor, I might say yeah. it helps a lot. So you, yeah, absolutely, it does. Um, and similar question is: Were there any moments that really set you back or like got in your way? Yes, the one I spoke about before. Uh, it was that time on. Uh, and I think for me, even right now, I might say I'm on a good spot, but, you know, when it shows up, uh, when my thoughts, they show up in dreams, doing mm. my dreams, you know, that's when I might have a, a setback. I, I can say, it, you know, I might have a set, setback. Mm. Because, you know, it feels so real and you don't have... Of course, you don't have control <laughs> at any moment of your life, mm. but in dreams, it's like really the most weirdest things might happen. And 
it was during that time and you know i i, I th- it was the only time when i thought about quitting i was really motivated at the beginning and also during treatment but that was the only time when i really thought about on okay now it's not working it's not worth it i made some progress but uh, you know i thought now it's not worth it anymore but you know i I said okay I I made it so far so it might be worthy to to give it a go again. Excellent. Yeah, well, I'm glad you did give it a go again. Um and yeah, and w- with your therapy, was it um were you doing mainly ERP or did your therapist bring anything else in? Yeah, uh Actually, we started the uh, ERP somewhat uh, longer after we started therapy in the beginning. So we started just some, I think it's under CBT, some general Mm. schema therapy, or I don't know, uh, just just, uh, talking about thoughts and just seeing where it's coming from and but uh, also what helped just before this is well, this was just before starting ERP was uh, we did uh, uh, we talked about act about values and uh, you know for me it made I never heard about act before but it made so much sense you know I I was uh, just seeing the reason and why why i started therapy in the first place you know i i found uh, my motivation to to start therapy like not just to to get rid of my thoughts but like a concrete a real thing that i that ocd was uh, just uh making my my life so so much pain and yeah we we just uh, worked on those values and it was something uh, alongside ERP but it was something that uh, I think it helps with life in general not just OCD so it's something I I live up to like every day I I have things that I want to do so that's pretty much for me I that sounds that sounds great for me so if I if I have time and uh, if I wake up in the morning that okay I have things that I want to do so that that's it yeah 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 excellent yeah absolutely um and in just words of hope that you'd want to share with others who are maybe in your situation before or who are going through therapy now? Uh, first, uh, I mean, I can say, like, just go to therapy and it will help you so much. But I think to be in that spot at the beginning, you have to be motivated to start therapy. I, yeah. I, I think no one can make you go to therapy you have to do that on your own and you have to find a really good and a strong motivation to do that there's you know uh, i think just think about what what uh, ocd is not letting you do what what are things that uh, you are putting aside because of ocd that's how i can put it yeah, really, really good point. Um, okay, so you, you can pull, uh, pick up the phone and call the twenty-year-old again. Yeah. What did you tell him? Uh, I don't know. I just can say, just you know, you have some, you'll have some really good time with uh, with OCD in general. So mm. <laughs> just enjoy that. <laughs> that's a, that's it's going to be a really good roller coaster experience for yeah. you. Ups and downs. Um, 
Okay. And uh, yeah, you got a billboard in Albania. What do you want yeah. written on that billboard? I, I don't know. I think I just, I will draw something, not write, but I would just draw something funny. I don't know, a comic strip or. <laughs> nice. But I, I don't know what exactly. Yeah. All right. No worries. I like that. It's different. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy. I think you know uh, that will uh, help you. Help you. That will help everyone. Uh, just get through the point. You know, through visuals, you mm-hmm. get you get to the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Pictures worth a thousand words. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, and then lastly, is there anything else you wish you could have said or shared today? I'm pretty sure I wish and I could have said like so many more, but uh, I'm really excited and nervous at the same time that I cannot remember. <laughs> so yeah, probably I I wish we can talk more truly. Maybe another time I wish mm. that, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Well, look, thank you so much for, again, for sharing your story. I really enjoyed hearing yeah. it. And you're thank the first you. Guest. That was so good. Yeah, thank you so much too for letting me be here, and uh, I really appreciate. It and I don't. I hope that uh, maybe someone in Albania will be motivated to start therapy. So yeah, that's something I would really like to to come out of this episode. So just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not sure how many Albanian listeners I have, but. Hopefully, I have a few. I hope so, yeah. But, uh, you know, as uh, as anyone with OCD, uh, they are, like, really hiding it. So <laughs> yeah, true. you can never know. Yeah, very good point. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. If you enjoy the OCD Stories podcast and would like to support us with a one-time tip slash donation, please go to theocdstories.com forward slash support. All tips, no matter how large or small, are greatly appreciated. Please subscribe and rate the show wherever you listen to the podcast. And thank you to NoCD for supporting our work. If you want to find out more about NoCD, visit go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories. And quick disclaimer, guys, this podcast is not therapy. It is not a replacement for therapy. Please seek treatment from a trained professional. Until we speak, take care.